Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. I'd invite you to sit down, but at the moment we're in a laboratory. The laboratory of Dr. John Gilbert and Stephen Kaplan, two research scientists at State University. Nothing but sinks and test tubes and Bunsen burners, and only one chair at a desk where Dr. Gilbert is now sitting alone, talking into a small tape recorder. I think without disturbing him, we might just listen. Tape. 26, 4 p.m. Friday, February 17. Tomorrow, we will make the supreme test. The serum I-23 has already been effective on mice and rabbits. Tomorrow, if it works on the human body, there's no end to the potential. I have no qualms at all. The serum won't kill me. At least, I don't think so. But we cannot know its true worth until we try it on a human. On me. Our mystery drama, I Thought I Saw a Shadow, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Bob Juran and stars Nat Poland. It is sponsored in part by True Value Hardware Stores and Contact, the 12-hour cold capsule. I'll be back shortly with Act One. When man tampers with the forces of nature, sometimes great things are revealed to him. Radio, for instance. Had it not been for man's curiosity, his probing and questioning, the miracle of broadcasting might still be undiscovered. And then, where would we be? That's just one of the thousands of ways that humans have put the laws of nature to productive use. But there are other laws and forces that are better left untouched, unexplored. For these laws are immutable, fixed, unchanging, and some of them when disturbed, produce frightening and devastating results. Let's go to the laboratory of Dr. John Gilbert and his assistant, Dr. Stephen Kaplan, as they prepare to tamper with just such a law. Lab 2, Kaplan here. Yes, sir, right here. John, Colonel Morgan. Oh, thanks. Hello, Colonel. I was expecting your call. Yes, on Saturday. But I... I know we've discussed it, Colonel, and I have to be firm. No witnesses. I realize the government is funding the project, but until Dr. Kaplan and I are sure it's ready, we have to conduct our experiments in absolute secrecy. Thank you, Colonel. Yes, yes, certainly, as soon as we have the result. Goodbye. If this thing's supposed to be top secret, how does Colonel Morgan come off thinking he can bring in a party of bird watchers? Well, he has to act important wants to be sure he gets whatever credit is coming. And I should be used to that. You mean Dr. Ferguson? She could have shared that award with me for the work we did on blood plasma. It was mostly my work. She could have given me some recognition, even though I was only a student. Well, forget her. I'm still worried about going ahead. I don't think we've run enough tests on the animals. I think it's too soon to be squirting the stuff in your arm. I know, Steve. But how much further can we go with the animals? We can't get a subjective reaction. We know the primary function of the serum works, but we don't know how they feel, how they move under the influence. I know you're right. And I know we're going through with it on Saturday. And I know I'm supposed to be a level-headed scientist. And I know I'm damn scared. I'll get it. Lab two, Gilbert. Hello, John. I'm not interrupting. Margot. Oh, I'm sorry to bother you at the lab, but I never get an answer to the apartment. I know, I know. I'm not there much anymore. You 
you were never there much any time. Oh, but that's past, John. I, uh, I wonder if I could see you. Of course, Margot. This project's taking all your time. You name it. Well, I could, uh, meet you tonight. Do you want to come to the apartment? No, I'd rather you came here. Want to make a dinner? That'd be nice. How about seven? All right, I'll be there. Goodbye, John. See you later, Margot. No comment. She's still my wife, Steve. In name only. I hate to see your concentration broken by another meeting. Particularly now. Two days before... I'm not a teenager, Steve. I can control my emotions. John, does Margot know about our work? No, no. I've kept it top secret even from her. Which wasn't difficult since we see each other so seldom now. Are you going to tell her? Why should I? I don't know, really, but... If something goes wrong... What would telling her in advance accomplish? I think, as your wife, she ought to know there's a chance she may never see you again. More coffee, John? No, no, thanks, Margot. I'd rather get down to some serious talk. Okay, well... We've been through the wine, the candlelight, and the steak. Now we've got to face the facts. The facts being? I want a divorce. I was afraid of that. John, don't make it any more difficult for me. We've been separated for almost a year. I want to be free. Do you? Really? Now, yes. A few months ago, I might have had doubts. But now I know I want to marry Bill Watkins. I want to be free to marry him. Well, I can't blame you. I'm not going to drag up the old neglected wife routine. You'll always be a deep part of me. Hmm. But I want more out of life than the shadow of a man. Well, I, I can't argue the point. But you'll always be a deep part of me. You know, working in the lab those, those many nights... Those lonely nights for you. For me, you were always there. I love you. Even though you were home and I was working, we were there together. I may have been there for you, but for me, it was lonely. Is lonely. Well, I'll... I'll do whatever you want, Margot. Thank you. No, damn it, I don't mean that. I don't want Bill Watkins to have you. John. Give me one more chance. Let, let, let me finish this project I'm on now. It'll only be a few weeks, and I'll, I'll take a sabbatical. We'll travel. We'll be together every minute. And then I'll settle for a teaching position in California. A nice, quiet, steady life. In other words, your career is the price you'll pay for me. Yes, if I have to. And you'll hate me for it. No, John. I want it my way. Well, it doesn't have to be settled tonight. Things can change. Maybe you will be free. What do you mean by that? Well, Steve thought I ought to tell you. It's supposed to be top secret, but as my wife... What is it, John? The project, the government project. Well, I know that. It, I know it's taken every minute for two years. But you've never known what it was. No. No, I could have put up a fight against another woman easier than that secret project. Well, Steve thought I ought to confide in you as my wife. Because, as he put it, you may never see me again. What? You've got to swear to secrecy, Margot. No one on earth except Steve and a handful of government officials know about this. All right. I, I swear. Steve and I have developed a serum. A serum that's injected into the body and renders the body totally invisible. Invisible? It changes the molecular structure of the body. It works on the nucleus of the body's atoms. We've proved it with the lab animals. Invisible? But why? Margot, its use in the military is beyond imagination. For spies, troops... Invisibility could turn the outcome of battles. And it works. On lab animals, it works. Well, that, 
That's fantastic. And on Saturday, we're trying it on me. On you? John, you mean you're... You're going to become in invisible? <laughs> That's the hope and the plan. The effect only lasts for an hour or so. But we can't be sure of it until we try it on a human. On the rats in the lab, it lasted one hour. Then, gradually, they reappeared. No worse for the experience. Then it's not dangerous? Not to the animals. But we've got to try it on a human to really find out. To get the subjective reactions. I mean, will I see myself? Or will I look down and see nothing but space? How will I move? My body will still be there. I won't be able to walk through things like a ghost, or will I? These are the questions we have to answer with a human subject. You. Me. You'll... You'll come out of it all right. We hope and expect so. The effect has to wear off. And if it doesn't? You'll never see me again. Oh. You seem to be making light of it. I have confidence in the serum. I admit I'm a trifle nervous about the sensations, the unknown. But to a scientist, the thrill of the unknown is the whole reason for being. Oh, how well I know. But it's not dangerous. If it were, those rats and rabbits would have been dead, or worse. But you'll have to take a, a much larger dose than you gave the animals, won't you? Well, naturally. You see, being a scientist's wife, something did rub off. And what that larger dose may, may do... Is something we have to find out on Saturday. Are you ready, John? Yes. Now, you're sure you... I'm sure, Steve. We've worked for two years for this minute. All right. Oh, damn it. Let it ring. I... I can't. Lab two. Steve, can I talk to John? It's Margot. All right. Margot? Oh, John, I had to call. Are, are you all right? We haven't started. You called at a very awkward time. Oh, I'm sorry. But I simply can't stop thinking. I understand. But you'll have to let me call you later. If you're able to. I will. I will. Please, Margot. I can't talk now. Oh, all right. Call me later. Go ahead. Okay. It's a large dose. At least 30 seconds to empty the syringe. Uh, feel anything? Not yet. I'm going to slow down on the pressure a second. Why? Let your body absorb what it's got already. I don't feel a thing. Maybe I'm not supposed to. You don't look any different either. It's too early to tell. Maybe the dose we planned isn't big enough. Stop the tape recorder. I have now absorbed 200 cc of the serum I-23. The 23rd formula which Dr. Kaplan and I feel to be the effective limit for invisibility. I have no sensation. 20 seconds have passed since the beginning of the injection. In our experiments with mice, invisibility began within the first 10 seconds and was complete by 30. Taking into account the difference in size and body tissue, I should begin to disappear within two minutes and complete invisibility should be affected in five. 40 seconds have passed. The syringe is empty. Feel any different? Our proportions couldn't have been that much off. It's not likely, but everything's still an X factor. The dosage must have been too small. We don't know that yet. All right, all right. We'll wait 15 minutes. Uh, failure number one. I don't understand it. I'm too tired and discouraged to rethink it now. It just doesn't work on human tissue. Larger dosage won't work either. If it's going to be practical for military use, the dose has to be small. A capsule a guy can pop in his mouth. A spy can't wait around for two or three injections to work. I know, I know. We'll go back to the formula Monday. 
I'm going to forget it for 48 hours. What time is it? Mm, 4.10. All right, I'm going out and have the biggest martini I can find. How about you? <laughs> I'll take two. You know, the nitrogen element may be too low. I don't think so. The balance was 80-20, nitrogen over phosphate. More likely it... John, hmm? stop a second. What's the matter? Look, on the pavement ahead of us. What? The sun's behind us. Look at my shadow. Oh, so? In front of you, there is no shadow. You're right. Your body isn't casting any shadow at all. shadow, a curious condition for Dr. John Gilbert, for anyone for that matter. After all, one's shadow is a very personal thing. It's yours alone. And to be without one, well, it's unnerving, to say the least. Thank goodness I still have mine. I can see it right here on the studio floor. So don't go away, please. Me and my shadow, if not Dr. Gilbert's, will be back shortly with Act Two. A man without a shadow. Something strange happened to the body of Dr. John Gilbert when he tried to make himself invisible by injecting a serum into his veins. But something stranger still is in store for Dr. Gilbert. For Margot, in fact, for the entire city where Dr. Gilbert lives and works, Let's return to State University. No shadow. Something's happened, Steve. The serum had some effect. It's working. Maybe this is one of the first signs. Come on, back to the lab. I want to make some tests and go over our notes. Now, move the light closer. Closer. That's it. Now circle me. Move back. Raise the light a little. Still nothing. Not a sign of a shadow. It's been 55 minutes since the injection. This is as far as the serum will go, apparently. What do you mean by that? The only way I can figure it. My body has lost some of its density. It won't obstruct light. That's why there's no shadow. Yes. Yes, the molecular structure must have dispersed just so far. Uh -huh. It's obvious, then, that a massive dose is the only thing that will bring on complete invisibility. Oh, no more, John. Not now. No, no, no. I didn't mean that. I'm not ready for more. But I'm going over the formula till I find it. The one equation that will push us over the line. We're so close. Oh, boy. Well, uh, why don't you take off? I have nothing on for the night. I'll work with you. I'd rather do it alone, Steve. John, do you think it's wise to be alone? We don't know what reaction might be next. The phone's right here. Now, if anything happens, you'll be the first to know. You're not hiding it very well, Margot. I know, Bill. I'm sorry to spoil our supper. Margot, I love you. We're going to be married. Your problem is my problem. Not exactly. It's John. I'm worried about him. Is he giving you a hard time about the divorce? No. He, he was going to call me today. I was expecting to hear from him before you picked me up. What's he calling you about? I, uh, I, I can't tell you. You still seem awfully interested in John. I am interested in his work. It's important. I thought his work was the whole problem between you two. It was, but, well... Then why all this sudden interest, the concern? Oh, Bill, you have a way of... Twisting things, I say. Margot, level with me. I can't tell you any more than I have. Only that I may never see John again. <laughs> that would be fine with me. Oh, stop it, Bill, please. If you knew my reasons, you'd understand. But I, I, I can't tell you. I feel no physical sensation at all. No dizziness. No apparent lessening of muscle tone or tissue structure. No loss of weight. <laughs> Just loss of shadow. 
Oh. This will be the last entry for this date. Saturday, February 18. I will resume tomorrow when... Steve? Steve, is that you? Steve? Who's there? I could swear someone came into the lab. New item. It's 10.05 p.m. I have a distinct feeling someone has entered the lab. There was no sound, just this feeling. I will continue taping in case this may prove helpful if anything happens. I know I am not alone. Who's there? Answer me! I... I can... I can see... a shadow. I know someone's there. Shadow is moving from the outer hall. In a second, I'll know who it is. There's nothing but a shadow. A man's shadow moving into the lab. It glides across the floor now. Not toward me, toward the wall. Within all reason, this can't be. But it is happening. Now it moves along the wall and stops. It hangs there on the wall, waiting. The shadow of a man. Now I know. I know with all certainty that that shadow on the wall is mine. How still it hangs there waiting for the last of the serum to wear off. But now, it moves again. Moves with a will of its own. Slowly across the wall, toward the window. There, it pauses by the window. And now, disappears into the night. This is Dr. Ferguson, Judith Ferguson. Yes, Doctor. I'd like to have the 1969 AMA report on cholesterol sent to my office right away. I'm sorry, Dr. Ferguson. The archives are closed. They're never closed to me, young man. I'll accept that report within the half hour. But, but Doctor, the files are locked for the night. I have no authority They who to... have. Well, only Mrs. Abrams, the director. Then get her at home and get me that... Just a minute. Who's out there? Dr. Ferguson? I've got to go. Someone just came into my outer office. Uh, get that report and get it now. Who's there? Sonny? Oh, I saw a shadow. <gasps> it is a shadow. But who's there? Answer me. Just a shadow. It, it can't be. Oh. Oh, yes. Yes, yes. Steve, something's happened. It sure has. Dr. Judith Ferguson was found dead in her office last night. Dr. Ferguson? It's on all the newscasts. Some clerk from the archives took a report to her office, said Ferguson insisted on having it last night, and he found her. Murder? They don't say. How awful. Mm. We'll hear all the lurid details soon enough. I'm more concerned about you. Any side effects through the night? No, no, it's funny. You know, I can't seem to remember anything after you left me. I think I started to dictate, and the... I just don't remember. My mind's a blank. Why can't I remember? Another effect of the serum, perhaps. Maybe, maybe. Or maybe the tape will tell us. I'll rewind, and then we'll find out what happened to me. That's strange. There should have been more than that. We'll play it. 
There are no physical sensations at all, no dizziness, no apparent lessening of muscle tone or tissue structure. <laughs> Just loss of shadow. Oh. This will be the last entry for this date, February 18. I will resume tomorrow when... Well, there's more. There's got to be more. Well, that's all there is. You fell asleep. No, no, there's something. An impression, something more happened. But why isn't it on the tape? <laughs> you fell asleep. Why can't I remember? Why? Oh. Uh, lab two, Kaplan here. May I speak to Dr. Gilbert, please? Who's calling? Lieutenant Healy, 4th Precinct. Oh. The police, John. Police? Why? Hello? Dr. Gilbert. I'm Lieutenant Healy, 4th Precinct. I wonder if I could talk with you this morning. What's wrong? Margo? Oh, it's about a Dr. Judith Ferguson. Dr. Ferguson? Oh, yes. My associate just told me. Uh, we're asking everyone who knew her to help if they can. I understand you're acquainted with her. Yes, yes. Some time ago, I was a student in one of her classes. In about an hour, all right? At your lab. Yes, I'll be here. Thank you, Dr. Gilbert. What's up? He wants to talk to me about Judith. They're asking everyone who knew her. Well, you haven't seen her in how long? Well, I see her in the hospital now and then, but our work together was over two years ago. Oh, relax, John. You haven't got anything to worry about. You know Dr. Ferguson how long? Well, Lieutenant, we were actually associated for only a year. I was a graduate student in one of her classes. That was two years ago. We wouldn't single you out like this, Dr. Gilbert, but we're told you and Dr. Ferguson were involved in a successful medical project, one that Dr. Ferguson received an award for. Yes, on blood plasma. We'll have to work in that closely with Dr. Ferguson. Can you remember any incident, any friend of hers, anything that might give us a clue to who'd want to kill her? Well, then you do suspect murder. Uh, this was no accident. How was she killed, Lieutenant? Nothing's been said. We were keeping that quiet. She was suffocated. Apparently, a clerk from the hospital archives department took a report to her office. She didn't answer his knock, so he got the custodian to open the door. They found her. The office was locked from the inside? Uh, windows, too. Well, then if it was murder, how did the killer get out? That's just one of the problems we've got with this case. Oh? There were no marks on the body. But the room was a shambles. She fought with someone. But we figure whoever tore that room apart has some marks on him. That's why we're talking to anyone we can find who knows her. Something will give the killer away. Well, thanks for your time, Doctor. I'll be in touch if we need any more from you. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye, Lieutenant. There was a time, I suppose, when I could easily have killed Judith Ferguson myself. My work, her acclaim. But I certainly wouldn't dream of it now. Come on, I'll buy you a drink. It's getting late. I'm so mixed up. These two days have been... <gasps> Wait. What's the matter? Someone's come into the lab. I didn't hear anyone. No sound, no. But someone's here. Now I remember. Last night, I remember. I was alone. I thought it was you. What are you talking about, John? It's back. It's here in the lab, just like last night. John, stop this. There. There. There it is. Good Lord. What? Shh. It's my shadow. My shadow. Alive. And with a will of its own. You saw this last night? Yes. Now watch. It moves along the wall. So slowly, silently. I can't believe I'm seeing I this. I couldn't believe it either, Steve. There it goes. Look. Along the wall. The drapes. Now, out the window. Just like last night. It's gone. Just like last night. It vanished at the window. And then, Doc, Dr. Ferguson. Ferguson? 
You don't think it was responsible for... It seems to have a will of its own. Steve, where is it going now? You've heard it said that some people are afraid of their own shadow. Well, it seems that Dr. Gilbert's shadow is something to be afraid of. It has already disposed of one of Dr. Gilbert's dark subconscious resentments. And there's not the shadow of a doubt there'll be more sinister happenings when I return shortly with Act Three. shadow is on the loose, a shadow with a will of its own, now drifting, gliding. And where, indeed, is it going next? What or whom is it after? Both John Gilbert and Steve Kaplan saw it pass through their lab. There's no doubt that Dr. Gilbert's shadow has an existence of its own, and Gilbert seems to think he knows what it's been up to. John, are you suggesting that this... This thing killed Judith Ferguson? I'm quite certain it did. That's impossible. The policeman said Judith died of suffocation. No marks on her body. A locked room. Does that sound like an ordinary murder? No, but why Dr. Ferguson? I don't know. Perhaps because I wished her dead at one time. I think we should notify this Lieutenant Healy. And tell him what? That we think a shadow is out killing people? Your shadow? He'll lock us up. Oh, I know. It does sound like nonsense. If this thing is a part of you that disengaged itself when you took the serum, it should return to normal when the serum wears off. Steve, it has worn off. I took that injection more than 24 hours ago. But that, that thing still exists. I'm still not sure I buy it, John. We don't know how long the serum might stay in your body. We found no trace of it in the mice after four hours. True, but their shadows didn't go wandering around well, either. Perhaps mice don't have resentful souls. Oh, you've really sold yourself on the idea that some astral part of you killed Judith Ferguson. When the serum changed my molecular structure, who knows what it released? I am changed permanently. The serum wore off long ago. And that thing out there continues to exist. Lab 2, Dr. Kaplan. Oh, Steve, Margot, is John there? No, he went home around 4 o'clock. Oh, I can reach John at the apartment then. Yes. How is he, Steve? I mean, really, after the experiment. Tired. Very tired. We both are. But there were no serious effects. Oh, I'm glad of that. How did the news of Dr. Ferguson affect him? He was shocked. The police were here this morning. The police? Why? Well, they're questioning everyone who knew her. But why John? They certainly don't suspect him. Of course not. It's routine. Well, I'd better call him. Thanks, Steve. Yeah, bye, Margo. Oh, that must be Bill. Uh, coming! Uh, come in, Bill. Feeling better today, darling? You were pretty upset last night. Ah, uh, yes. I, I'm sorry I spoiled our dinner. Margo, we've got some things to talk about that can't wait. I know. John. No, not John. You're the one who's making my life complicated, not John. Do you want me or don't you? Of course, Bill. But why do you insist I cut off every mention of John? I won't share you. Oh, Bill, that's kid stuff. It's not kid stuff. And it's not only this weekend. I've felt it for weeks. I am trying desperately to control myself. I've had a nerve-wracking weekend, and you won't let up on me. Then tell me what's so special about Dr. Gilbert this weekend. Bill, let go of my arm. Tell me. He's doing an experiment. So? Well, he's, he's trying to... To what? Bill. Bill, there's someone in the bedroom. What? I just saw a shadow pass the bedroom door. But how could anyone get in through the... Bill, what is it? A shadow. Moving along the wall. The shadow of a man. I see it. But, but, but how? This doesn't make any sense. 
Oh. There's no one here. Just a shadow. Oh, Bill, I'm frightened. It stopped. Now it's sliding down the wall. Coming along the floor. Coming towards us. Oh, oh Bill, it's covering you. I can't breathe. Oh, I, I don't know what to do. Oh, God. Oh, Bill. Get away, Mojo. No, no, Bill. We haven't been able to get a word out of her, Dr. Gilbert. She's in deep shock. Then you don't know what happened in Margot's apartment. I'm hoping you'll be telling me. This smacks of more than coincidence, Dr. Gilbert. Two people whose lives touched yours, dead within 24 hours of each other, and killed the same way. Are you ready to believe me? Ready. My shadow killed them both. I don't know who will be next. Now, look, Dr. Gilbert, if you're going to make light of this, I'll be damn sure you're sorry. Oh, I'm not making light of anything. My shadow is loose with a will of its own. Now, you may be an eminent scientist, Look at the but... floor, Lieutenant. Look! There's your shadow. Where's mine? Oh. Well, oh, okay, I... I've read enough science fiction to believe it, but don't ask me to be putting out an all-points bulletin on your shadow. Shadows don't kill people, Doctor. People do. Is, is, is that you, Bill? Margo, it's John. John. Oh, Bill's dead. Relax, Margo. Don't try to talk. Oh, it was so horrible. The shadow on the wall it came at us. It moved along the floor, and then Bill choked. Shh, and... shh, uh, Mrs. Gilbert. You saw this shadow, only a shadow. There wasn't anybody there. Nothing but a shadow. A, a shadow. Well, I'll be outside. I've got to make a phone call. John, how is Margot? She's out of shock. They have her sedated. Uh, this Bill Watkins was victim number two. There's no doubt. She saw the shadow. It enveloped him and slowly suffocated him. What does Lieutenant Healy say? I told him the whole story. He had a hard time accepting it until Margot confirmed the shadow. Dr. Gilbert! Dr. Kaplan! Oh, we've got real trouble. What's the matter, Lieutenant? Two more deaths. Exactly like Ferguson and Watkins. Who? Uh, a reporter from uh, from the Herald, Jim O'Hara. I, I never heard of him. Well, how about a Helen Morris, a bridal consultant at Long's Fashion Center? No, I don't know her either. Oh, you're, you're positive there's no connection. None at all. Well, that means the thing is hitting at random. Oh Lord, what have I done? Look, is there any clue, Doctor Gilbert? Anything that might help? There hasn't been time to study it. It only started yesterday, and... Wait a minute. There is something. The shadow always returned to the laboratory. I saw it first, before Dr. Ferguson did. And then we both saw it there this morning. Before it went after Bill Watkins. Then your lab is the most likely place to look for it. I don't know. I don't know what it will do. Still, I'm responsible. How can we stop it if it does show up? And we'll worry about that later. If this leaks to the press... We'll have a panic. That's right, Captain. Dr. Gilbert thinks it will come back here to his lab. No, well, I don't know. Wait a minute. The Captain thinks he ought to send a, a cordon. Surround the lab. You wanted to keep this quiet. No cordon's going to catch a shadow. <laughs> Hello, Captain. The doctors think it'll attract too much attention. I agree. Okay. Okay, we'll wait. And keep your line open. Well, almost an hour. Nine o'clock. I wonder if we're driving it off waiting like this, Lieutenant. I think it'd be better if I were alone. No way. I'm going to be staring. Dr. Gilbert has a point, Lieutenant. Well, there's nothing any of us can do if it does appear. You can't shoot it, catch it. Why don't you leave me alone and see what happens? Well, maybe you know more about this thing than I do. I'll go along. I'll be right downstairs, though. 
I'll wait with the lieutenant, John. Maybe this is between you and whatever it is, your shadow. Yes. Yes, I think it is. I don't like leaving him alone. Neither do I, Lieutenant. But I don't know what else to do. If the shadow comes back, maybe he can deal with it. And it may not come back. It may keep on killing. Who knows what it's going to do? Who ever heard of anything like this before? I can't believe I'm sticking out a shadow. We can wait in here. Faculty Lounge. Well, I only wish I knew what we were waiting for. Tape 12. Sunday, February 19, 9.30 p.m. There have been no further effects on my body. Nothing more to indicate the cause of this strange transformation that's taken place with the loss of my shadow and the subsequent power of that being. Will it return to me? I know now what I have to do, what I must do. There it is, slipping in at the window. I knew you'd be back. There's only one way you can be stopped. When I die, you'll have to return to me, locked to me as you were all through my life. My shadow, no longer with a will of your own. It's my own life that gives life to you. Almost 9.30. I think we have to go back up. At least we can see if he's okay. Maybe you're right. Come on. I got my doubts about anything happening like this. That's John. I'm getting me gun ready. John! He may still be alive. John. Oh, let me get to the phone. Police emergency. Get me. Uh, he's dead. Never mind. The gun's still in his hand. He never fired a shot. And there's not a mark on him. The thing... Just like the others. We'll never know. Oh, John. What are you doing, Doctor? Uh, what I should have done long ago. Destroying the formula and everything about this fiendish project. The chemicals, the notebooks, even the tapes. I don't want to know anymore. I hated this thing from the start. I got a call, headquarters. That, that thing may still be on the loose. No. No, it isn't, Lieutenant. Look on the floor. Oh, yes, I see. Yeah. The shadow of a man slumped over in his chair. Do you have any doubt it's Gilbert's shadow? As still as he is. <laughs> Dr. Gilbert. His shadow? His subconscious? Dr. Gilbert went too far over the border of man's understanding. He delved too deeply in secrets that should remain untouched. For in all of heaven, earth, and even hell, there are some things that are better left untampered with. And this was one of them. I'll be back shortly. Stand up and take a good look at your shadow. Is it following your every move? Is it really the shadow you're casting or, look closely now, do you detect a little deviation, a little rebellion, a hint that perhaps your shadow might like to do its own thing? Maybe you'd better turn off the lights. That's the surest way I know of getting rid of shadows, wanted or otherwise. Our 
cast included Nat Poland, Joan Shea, Gordon Gould, and Lloyd Batista. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs>